Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood reviewer with Intuit Reviews. Welcome back to the neighborhood. So recently, the QKZ VK4 has been garnering some attention. Others have been all over the interwebs claiming that the VK4 are some of the best IEMs out there, even at their modest price of around $11. Even more boastful, some others have claimed that the VK4 is a better IEM than the fabled Blonde BL03. And while I definitely do not think that the Blondes are ultimately TOTL, as others have suggested, they are a decent set. Then Dave from DBS Tech Talks and Farcel the Wizard got together and decided that I needed to take a look at the Mass Drop Noble X as well. So what I decided to do is sit down and spend some time with each of these in a comparison together. So let's get into that. So let's start things off with the positives for the QKZ VK4. First of all, it's a cheaper IEM than the Blonde and the Noble X. I paid approximately $11 to AliExpress for the set I'm speaking about here, and for $11 the VK4 does look rather stunning and produce a rather stellar sound, exceeding price range expectations to a certain extent. But so does the Blonde in that regard. With the Noble X, I had the opposite experience. At $125, the Noble X is horrendously overpriced, both in terms of sound and build quality. With regard to builds, even though it's a cheap cable, I do like the cable that the VK4 has better than both the cable of the Blonde and the Noble X, but there's no surprise there. The cable that comes with the Blonde is notoriously bad, and let me tell you, the cable that comes with the Noble X is somehow worse. The cable that comes with the Noble X is thin, it's cheaply constructed, it's made out of mostly cut rate plastic, and I've never seen a cable as bad as this with an audiophile IEM. I mean hell, the chin slider is just a piece of clear plastic wrap, the curve at the connectors is overly steep, it's almost non-existent prior to the 2-pin termination, and the cable itself falls out from the left earphone for some reason. It also sounds horrendously bad, and it's the worst cable out of the bunch for sure. All three of these IEMs use a 2-pin connector. The tips included with the Noble X and the VK4 are better than the tips that come out of the box with the Blonde, but none of the tips for any of these sets really produce any excellent sound quality here for the respective IEMs. In general, the Noble X tips felt the nicest out of the three, but the VK4 tips fit the best and were the best match acoustically, even if I wouldn't recommend using them in the end. In terms of the construction of the shells, the BL03 is the best construction by far, even despite its fit issues for some. The Blondes have durable metal shells, and they have a good weight to them. Although they may be perceived as heavy by some, I had no issues with this, and they actually fit in my ears fairly well, and retained their tips the best with SpinFit CP100s instead of the CP145s that most people have recommended in the past. I not only think that CP100s are more functional for the Blondes, but I also think that CP100s sound better as well as they tame the Blonde BL03's mid-bass bloat the best. The VK4 is super light for an IEM in general and may fit people more universally, but it is constructed of a translucent plastic that does not appear to be of the highest quality. I wouldn't put too much pressure on this set without fear of cracking the shell. The plastic housing of the Noble X is thicker, but somehow worse. It seems like plastic the way it was produced 20 years ago. And if you think the blondes have fit issues, wait till you get a load of the Noble X. This thing perches up in your ear like a birdhouse. And I have large ears, and it barely fits within the recesses of my pinup. As to which is better for the money, we'll circle back around to the pound for pound question at the end of the review. For now, I will say that the VK4 beats the blonde out when it comes to bass and treble extension, having slightly greater extension at both ends. 
Even so, base clarity is a toss-up between the two, depending on listener preferences or where the bass frequencies are coming from and reside within the track. The upper bass and mid bass is actually more emphasized and more articulate on the blondes, even if there's a slight bass bleed on the BL03. The VK4 have more sub bass representation than the blondes do, even if this does lead to more overall bass warming on the VK4, even keeping in mind the bass bleed on the blonde BL03. Plus, I ultimately found the bass on the VK4 to be somewhat smushy in terms of overall tonality. I'd also generally say that the VK4 has more of a consumer tuning than the Blonde does, in my opinion. The Blonde delivers more of a holographic soundstage, which I think draws a lot of people to it. While the Blonde stage is undeniably stretched in width and less natural in magnitude than the VK4's, instruments in space have better spacing and definition to them on the Blonde BL03. I've heard that the VK4 is better for placing Sonics in space for gaming, but with regard to music, I could not replicate this, and the Blonde excelled versus the VK4 for musical imaging. So even though the scope of the soundstage was more accurate on the VK4, separation was less than stellar, it was muddy, and somewhat confusing on complicated tracks of music. I did find that SpinFit CP145 tips did help with the VK4 with regard to tone, separation, and overall presentation, but in the end, the Blonde was more liquid sounding, smoother, and more engaging to listen to than the VK4 was. With specific regard to vocals, it isn't even a competition. The Blondes won hands down. The vocals on the VK4 were somewhat thin, whereas the Blondes produced more lush, fuller sounding vocal presentations for both male and female singers alike. So by now, you may be wondering, why haven't I talked about the Noble X since the build? And that's because the Noble X doesn't even really deserve the sonic comparison. The main reason that I threw the Noble X in here is that I think that Noble should be ashamed of themselves for producing this IEM at $125 when you can buy examples like the VK4 for $11 or the Blonde BL03 for $27. In general, the Noble X may be the worst sounding audiophile IEM that I have heard to date, especially with its stock cable in use. In stock formation, the Noble X sounds extremely grainy and hazy across the entire spectrum. It is flat in the bass, and it's thin in the mid-range, and it's vocal presentation as well. It's also overly rolled off in the treble. Swapping to an 8-core Yin Yu cable helped these out tremendously, enhancing their clarity somewhat, but they still were not good by any stretch of the imagination. More specifically, the haziness and grain which I referred to earlier appears to mostly be caused by the cheap stock cable in this case. But ultimately, there was no fixing the Noble X's issues with regard to extremely limited bass extension, rolled off treble, and overall tonal inaccuracies. The bass remained rather one note, and it still rolled off way too early. Impact was relatively non-existent. I could even notice this roll off on classical guitar tracks, as the bass strikes were often particularly obfuscated, making the bass on this unit generally unacceptable in my book. With regard to tone, the Noble X sounds somewhat dull, plasticky, and overly smoothed over, and yet somehow they still sounded best with foam tips to me. These sound like a childhood toy version of audiophile IEMs. I half expected them to come from a Happy Meal. I refrain from using the word veiled unless I absolutely have to, and well, these are dark and veiled for sure. The Noble X does perform best within the mid-range, however, and has an average to slightly above average soundstage within that. There's decent imaging and a relaxed presentation overall. Separation was decent in the mid-range, but it fell apart as it attempted to dig into the upper and lower registries. Positively, the Noble X did tone down poorly recorded tracks that tended to have a harsher presentation to them, such as some of the tracks by The Black Keys, Aerosmith, or The Black Crows. So if you want a relaxed, non-fatiguing IEM for poorly recorded music, 
and you aren't timber sensitive, then these might be IMs for you. They're just definitely not for me. No one would ever accuse the Noble X of being fatiguing, but I ultimately take offense at the drastic measures that it takes to be inoffensive. So really, the comparison here comes down to the BLO3 and the VK4. And in the end, even though I said on my BLO3 video that the blonde lacks enough specialness to be considered TOTL, it is definitely more special than the VK4. The blonde, BLO3, sounds more hi-fi and has more technical details and capabilities for music compared to the VK4. Having said that, both cheaper IEMs are light years ahead of the Noble X, which is multiple times their price. For my money, I'm picking the blonde BLO3 for the pound for pound champion amongst these three. But as a heads up, I have the blonde BLO5 coming into the channel at the end of the month. But I can't give a definite date on when that video will be released until I have that in my hands. Speaking of which, if you guys would like to get me things more quickly, or just in general want to support the channel for all the hard work that I do, it would be really helpful if you considered hitting that subscribe button. We're also going for a thousand subscribers now, at which point I will be doing another giveaway for a set of Cost KSC 75s, which is a great headphone to run off your phone if you haven't experienced that yet. Also, there's new access points for the neighborhood in the form of Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and a companion blog. So make sure to check those out and follow the channel at each of those locations as well. If you do so, it will give you additional entries into the giveaway drawing at 1000 subs. And with that, I'm out for now.